listening to the worst marathon ever. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. And these are, this is the worst, the second. Help me out here. <laughs> in, in the history of marathons, where does this one rank? Second worst. This year? History. Oh, and guess what? We've made it to your favorite rule of Pixar. Are you ready for it? Rule number four. Once upon a time, there was blank. Every day, blank. One day, blank. Because of that, blank. Because of that, blank. Until finally, blank. What the blank? <laughs> I, this has got to be the most blank and confusing rule that uh, I've ever blank and seen. Okay, so, so once upon a time, blank? Once a time, there was blank. Okay, once upon a time, there was blank. And we fill that in with, okay, let me give you one of the Pixar movies. Right? Isn't sure. that, yeah, isn't that, that the I, smartest that thing sense. to do on this bullshit? I don't understand how this can be a rule, though. I mean, you know, it's... <sighs> Anyways, sorry. Okay, so... Up. Up is our once upon a time Up is blank. what we're going with? Oh, it, would you rather do an easier well, one? I don't know. It, that's fine. Okay, okay th- well, we'll do an easier one. Monsters, Inc. Okay, once upon a time, there was... A monster... That worked for the power company. <laughs> okay. Every day he went to the power company and scared kids. One day, instead of scaring a kid, a precocious kid came out of the door into his world. Because of that, everything kind of went crazy in his life. I'm uh, Because of that, what? What's the best way to say what happened next? What, what, because of that, he was in danger of losing his job. Or losing his standing at the power company. Okay. And because of that, because he of that, had to hide her. And because of that, he fell in love un- with her. Until finally, he fell in love with her. Right? I guess. Well, if our professor were here, he'd say there is a, an absolute correct answer. <laughs> but right. I'm thinking it's fudgeable. Well, yeah, I mean, this is a hard rule. And how many because of that's and because of that's... How many are there? With? There's two because of that. But we did two, right? Yeah. But do you think that encapsulates everything in that story? Well, no. There's no Mike Wazowski at all. But... Well, I mean, the, does it tell the main story all the way? Oh, he fell in love with her as the end? I don't know. That seems like it until finally... Oh. Finally does sound, you know, it's got the word final as part of it. Oh, okay. See, I thought that there was still another blank coming. No, that's it. Yeah, finally is the end of the, the rule. Okay, so let's reorganize. Once you know what I was At the time, there was a monster named Sully who worked at the power company scaring children. Every day. He scared children for their screams. One day. Boo ran through the door. Into his world. Because of that... He discovered that human beings weren't terrifying. And dangerous. And dangerous, there you go. Because of that... He uncovered a secret that they had been going about things all wrong. Until finally... He used the laughter of children to power Monstropolis. Is that, that better or worse? Work. I don't know. I think the first one may have been may have more encapsulated what the story was really about. The in the end, although it wasn't so much the end, or was it? When he finally he realizes that Boo is all that matters to him. He loves this child as though she were his own child. Well, when you the, the until finally. Is the hard one because it sounds like we're finishing the story right. with that sentence, and that's why I said, you know, you, okay, we started using laughter because that's how the story ends, except for they rebuild the book, the door, right, and he goes in there, uh, which is the big happy ending or whatever. But 
<sighs> I don't know. This oh, can, well, let's try it with a blank rule. Is well, uh, yeah. The first time you presented that to me, I was like, "What? How is this a rule? This sucks. This is this is Mad Libs." <laughs> <laughs> and it okay. is. Once upon a time, there was noun. Scorpion. <laughs> Every day, verb. Douching. <laughs> so, I... I <laughs> Every day... <laughs> because of that prepositional phrase. I don't, I don't, I don't know what a prepositional phrase is. I didn't do that well in English. It wasn't in honors English. Like That's honors. right. Damn it. Okay, so up. Uh, We're going to do up. I, okay, you're, we'll well, try it again. We are you. Once upon a time, there was a crotchety old man who lived in a little house surrounded by a suddenly burgeoning, or recently burgeoning city. Okay. Every day, he would... Uh, Every day, they tried to buy up his house? Or? Tried to get him to... To See, sell the house? To leave? I don't what know. What is it about? Jeez, dude. Um, I don't know if that's it's, gonna. by the time we're done, it's just going to be... And then, finally, he put some balloons on the house and flew away. The end. Except for that was when the story started. Uh, every day... That's That's got to be one day he put balloons on his house and flew away. Okay, because but, of that... Once upon a, Once there was a lonely old man. A lonely old widower. Every yeah. day, he, he told people to leave him alone. He sat alone, but chasing off anyone who came near. Is it because of that? What's next? One day. One day, he put balloons on his house to fly away and have the adventure that he and his wife never managed to have. Okay. Because of that, he went on an adventure with Russell. Okay. Because of that, he discovered that he needed Russell and as much as Russell needed him. Or he needed others might be okay. A, 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 the lesson, anyways, that he discovered as opposed to just Russell. Until finally, Until finally he was no longer a lonely old man. Okay, I get that. I mean, that's my thought. Yeah, that I, works. It's super reductive. <laughs> Obviously. Um, and super, super simplistic, which doesn't seem like Pixar's thing. But that's one of those things that you have to do a lot in writing, though. I mean, I, uh, we've talked about in previous episodes uh, getting ready to do to write novels. And I have mentioned maybe only a small amount of it, but I have a novel uh, outlining book that I've been kind of using. And thing number one in this outlining book is boil your story down to one sentence. Oh, geez. What is your that's, story that's something about? That they would make us do in film school. Yeah, it's give us the premise of your story. Not they, they, a paragraph. They'd say the log line, right? Yeah, a log line is what they do call it that. In uh, film, they'd say that the log line. Yeah. Uh, two star-crossed lovers meet aboard the Titanic before it sinks. You know, meet and fall in love before... Yeah, yeah, et cetera. You know. Yeah, something like that. It, it's kind of a... And I mean, A, it's it's... Nice to have. So when you say, oh, yeah, I'm writing a novel. And people say, oh, really? What is it? You don't have to be like, okay, so there's this guy. And uh, he does these things. And you go into this big, long story. Because everyone's like, oh, really? Okay, well, uh, oh, I think I hear my wife calling. Sorry, i got to go. But if you can just say, hey, it's it's an action-adventure story about this and this and this. One thing that they really wanted us to do in, in that class, or, or maybe it's once I got into the real world, we found out what film producers wanted was it's this, this meets, meets that. this <laughs> and i really rail against that that just cuz to me that's way more reductive and simplistic than two people of different of uh, different wealth levels whatever you call that fall in love meet and fall in love before the titanic sinks 
what's what's the word that I want? Class. Classes. But to say Romeo and Juliet meets the Poseidon adventure, which is what <laughs> I mean, that is what Titanic is. <laughs> That is, uh, that's insulting. <laughs> it is, but on t- uh, I guess it's the one, the one good thing about it is y- you can tell people what your story is about by saying you're familiar with this and this. It's kind of like mixing the two of those together. You know these things, and now let's put them together. It's yeah, it's kind of like that. Nobody's saying that is exactly like <laughs> that. I would say because nothing is. Well, is the Pixar rule is that one sentence? All but the thing with all the bl- yeah, blanks? it's a bunch of commas. Okay, it, this comma, then this. But I think that's an important thing to boil your story all the way down to its absolute essence. And I don't know if using that is the best way to do it. There, if this blank, then this blank because of that blank. That's kind of a sort of annoying. But boiling your story down to that one, not the log line that this meets this. But the, you know, the one sentence premise okay, this well, g- is the heart of the story. G- sorry to interrupt you. Give me the first part again, the first two blanks. Once upon a time, blank. Was well, it blank or on. once upon a time there was a? Probably there was. Once upon a time there was blank. Every day, blank. Okay. So the gauntlet. Give me the that. The, that much of the gauntlet. Okay. Uh... The everyday part is not particularly interesting, but I guess it usually is. Well, but once upon a time, to do it, so. there was a, a a pair of orphans, a brother and sister. Every day, every day, they were in college. They went to class. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Oh, see, I assumed that the sister was like twelve years old. Ramona was twelve no. or thirteen years old or younger. So she's an adult. She is, yeah. Change. Just, change it right now. Just barely. I could. Never mind. That it's would, your novel. Do whatever you want. That would get want. me right into but, the awesome realm of YA fiction. But, uh, yeah, I never got the impression that they were anything other than kids. I I, I'm, I mean, I, the brother seemed older, like he was 15 or 16. But the, do- the sister always seemed, like, really young. And maybe I should cut all of this part out. But no, I, that's just, fine. But they're both in college. And why? What, Basically, was that wanted, always your idea that they would be in college? Or? Yeah, well, I want them to be out on their own without anybody that they could fall back on, kind of a thing. They they're orphans to begin with, and they went through like foster care and stuff like that. And now they are both on their own and can rely on no one but themselves. When this happens, God, that's basically my purpose of it and i don't know if you remember the pictures that i showed you of them they didn't look like 14 no no, they didn't but i still didn't realize that (laughs) yeah it's supposed to be just into adulthood on you know relying on themselves but not far into it if you know what i'm saying Hmm. so the sister the younger one ramona is 18 years old Possibly even 17, but I would say 18. And then, yeah, the, the brother's 20. Okay. But yeah, that's my if, then that. Do you want to give me your if, then, or whatever? <laughs> that's not Okay, what, what it is. is it again? Sorry, it's once upon a time there was, every day. Once upon a time there was a Mennonite boy named Jeremiah. Every day. Every day he worked the fields with his cousin to support his mother. The end. Both of our stories sound really boring when you only go that far. Right, but we haven't got to the (laughs) twist or the the, the inciting incident. one day blank. And one day these two orphans inherit a magical gauntlet. Okay, yeah. One day... Jeremiah goes out into the wide world. Yes, the, the the world of the outside world. That's probably not the inciting incident either, and, though. And yeah, something yeah, and, has to come. To oh, but the and and because of this, right? Or is there an and on that? There's too? not an and, but I'm wait because yeah, he doesn't just go into the wide world. That's not the one day. 
That's part of the one day. One day he goes out into the wide world and something uh, happens. Yeah, yeah. And because of that, because of that, right? Yeah. So. Because, uh, yeah, just leaving the farm is not starting into your story. This isn't another Western. <laughs> This is something different. But that sounds like the beginning of a Western. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's a challenge. I mean, yours is a challenge for you, too. But uh, I'm just saying you're not giving us the full inciting incident is all. Which is what the one day is. Okay, well, let's let's do Star Wars. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a farm boy named Luke Skywalker. Who comes into the movie like 26 minute mark. Right? You know what I mean? All of the stuff leading up to that is not Luke's story. So that is re- remarkable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Once upon a time, there was a farm boy named Luke Skywalker. Every day he worked his moisture farm with his Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. One day... Although you could also say every day he dreamed of adventure and, and something beyond Yeah, maybe the that's farm. what the every day is. Go ahead, sorry. One day, two droids appear with a secret message from... Would that be the inciting incident? The droids showing up? Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I think, is the inciting incident. For Luke. Because there's a buttload of inciting incidents, right? I, I, like, just the, the Leia putting the plans into R2 or... But, if, I mean, if we're looking at Luke's story... If well, Luke Luke's is story the main, is the story. Okay. Luke is the one who goes through this. And yes, he has friends along with him, but he's the one that blows up the Death Star at the end. But we always talked about the moment when Luke says, I want to become a Jedi like my father. I right. want to go with you to Alderaan, become a Jedi like my father. Right. That's is why the... I stopped to say, is that the inciting incident? The droids arriving with the message that sets him on to But this see, that's adventure? the call to adventure in the monomyth, right? Okay. The help me, Obi Wan. You must come with me to. You must learn the ways of the Force. If you to come with me to Alderaan, that's that's the call to adventure, right? But in this Pixar rules thing, let's do it with. There was a distress call from, or a secret message from a a princess in danger, a kidnapped princess. Because of that, he went. He left his planet to go attempt to rescue her. Because of that, the Rebel Alliance found out about the Empire's one weakness. Until finally, Luke himself was able to exploit that and destroy the Empire. Is that okay, or how would you like to do it? I That is pretty good. I don't know. We've been going almost 20 minutes now. You're kidding me, on the blank and one? this is the blankety-blank rule that we figured would be the shorty, so... I think we need to just let it lie. I think we've kind of got what it's all about, more or less. And I suppose if you want to comment about it and, uh, you know, l- let us know what we're missing. If you're sitting there listening to your uh, device going, no, you idiots. This is what they're saying. Why can't you get it? Put yeah, I honestly don't get it. If if If... There's something else. If it's, yeah, if it's not what we've come up with, then I don't know what the hell this rule means. It's just, it's difficult. Uh, but yeah, um, we're going to call it there. We're going to put a fork in it and say it's done. So we'll see you tomorrow. I'm Big Anglovich. And I'm Rich Outfield. Go blank yourself. <laughs> San Diego. That Gets My Goat is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it.